Hello everybody, this is Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to DVD Architect, Premier Elements, Vegas Movie Studio Platinum, Cyberlink Power Director, and a number of other programs. And we're here looking at Premier Elements. Now Premier Elements is an excellent editing program, but it is not much of a producer of DVDs or Blu-ray discs. It's still a favorite way for a number of people to distribute their videos and they have become a little bit frustrated with the DVD authoring system here in Premiere Elements. It's nice that it's on the same timeline as video editing, but it's limited and in fact in some of the more current versions of Premiere Elements you cannot even output a Blu-ray disc. So the question is how do I get my files from here into a dedicated DVD authoring program like DVD Architect? Well we have a video here on our timeline. We're going to go to export and share and we'll go to devices. If you want to output your video for use in a DVD, you can still do that fairly easily. If you go over here to the standard definition, you select the standard definition or the SD480 option. If you were working in PAL rather than NTSC, you would choose 576. And then from the drop down menu, select MPEG PS. That will give you an MPEG2 file that is optimized for DVD. It will load right into DVD Architect. But the challenge is when you want to create a Blu-ray disc. If you go over here to 1920 by 1080, you'll see that the output format is limited to MP4. You can't output it as anything else. That's a fine format for outputting. It's great for playing your video, but it isn't the ideal format to load into DVD Architect. Now you may be able to get away with using an MP4 in DVD Architect, but things work better, smoother, more efficiently if you are using a, an optimized file in your DVD Architect project. But let's go ahead, we're going to output the only option we have here for 1920 by 1080 an MP4, and we're going to output it here just by clicking the Browse button to a folder in my documents that I'm calling DVD Architect Project. So select that folder. Historic Florida is the name of the file, and we'll save it. It's just going to take a few minutes. In fact, it takes about the running time of the video to output the video. It's about a six minute long video, so it'll take about six minutes. We're going to go ahead and jump ahead and show you what happens once it's output. Okay, and there's our completed file. And if we jump on over here to Windows Explorer, uh, we can see there in our documents in the DVD Architect projects is our MP4. Now let's jump over to Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. I can import that MP4 into Vegas Movie Studio Platinum. There it is. And we'll add it to the timeline. There we go. And we'll allow the program to set its project settings to match the specs of the video. Perfect. And now we'll output it as an optimized Blu-ray file here for DVD Architect. Now we could do that by going over here to Make Movie and selecting the shortcut, burn it to DVD or Blu-ray disc, and it will walk us through the process. Or we could do it the more common way by going to Project and selecting Render As, which opens up our render templates. And the ideal template for outputting video for DVD Architects Blu-ray is the Sony AVC. If we go right down to the bottom, there are Blu-ray options. Now, I'm just gonna jump over here to DVD Architect for a second, and I'm going to File, properties and here are the properties for our blu-ray disc uh, we're going to set this to video format to avc notice it's 24 frames per second and a bit rate of 18. so that's what we're shooting for if we can provide it that the program will not have to retranscode the video so let's go back over here to vegas movie studio platinum we're going to again find 24p there we go. And the 24P has got the 16 megabits per second video stream, which is good enough. That's close enough. That'll get us there. And we're going to send it here to the folder DVD Architect Projects, and I'm going to give it a name and click Render. This too will take just a couple of seconds. So once again, we'll jump ahead to the end. And there we go. And once again, the rendering time here took just about the running time of the video, about six minutes in this case. Once we've output our video stream, and this is just the way Vegas works. Uh, we output or render as the audio also, making sure it has the same name. But let's go ahead and if we save Sony Wave 64, that's a 64-bit audio file, which has some advantages over the regular 32-bit wave. We'll call it Florida again. 
Now, don't worry about uh, sending out separate audio and video streams. DVD Architect will recognize the two as long as they're in the same folder and have the same name and then unite the two of them in the program. So let's go back over to DVD Architect. I just want to show you something. I'm going down here to the DVD Architect folder that we created, Architect Projects. We'll do a refresh, narrow the files. Just want to show you one thing. If I drag uh, the MP4 up there and drag it onto the page so it's inserted onto the DVD, you notice if I go over here to File, Optimize Discs, and you notice here an optimized disk indicated by these two exclamation points, both the audio and the video from that file, the MP4, will need to be retranscoded. And that's a process that could take several minutes, could take an hour, could take even longer than that. That's why I like to use optimized files. So I'm going to delete that off that page. And instead, we're going to drag just the video that we created here from Vegas Movie Studio drag it there onto the page so it's inserted into the DVD. Once again, the program is going to recognize that there's an audio track forward and it will automatically unite the two of them. And with that added to our Blu-ray disc, let's go over here to File, check out Optimize Disc, and notice those two green check marks. Those tell us that no retranscoding is necessary. We have given it a file that is virtually done. So creating a Blu-ray, once we've done all the authoring here, actually outputting the Blu-ray will take a matter of seconds rather than minutes or even hours. So real advantages to using optimized files. That may seem like extra steps having to go through two programs like that, but if you want to give the program the ideal file format for creating your Blu-ray disc, that's the way to do it. If you want to know more about video editing and some of the tips and tricks that we've learned over the years, be sure and check out the tips and tutorials at moviepix.com. And if you have any questions, come by our community forum. It's absolutely free and we'll answer any question you have for us. If you want to know everything there is to know about all of these editing programs, check out our moviepix.com guides. Those are available at amazon.com. I'm the author. I'm Steve Grisetti, and I hope to see you again real soon.